I'm guessing like 97, 98, 99, sometime around there. I just wanted the t-shirt. I wanted it. But once you see what's on the t-shirt, you might, it, it, it's like full circle to what I'm doing right now. my goal today. These are my last boxes to unpack. Right there. Hold me to it. Hold me to it. stamina building a lot of endurance work in this training block but one um, approach that I take for arriving at the starting line is I, I never want to be afraid of the distance of the race and two years ago for Amsterdam and New York City um, I wasn't afraid, but I would say it was definitely uncertain. Granted, the Amsterdam Marathon was my first marathon. So this, this time around, two years later, two years older, two years stronger, two years more of aerobic engine building, I am feeling very confident with respect to being able to race 26 miles. I had never done the Pikes Peak Marathon two years ago. And so just that... Um, like it doesn't scare me at all. For example, I'm doing another 22 miles this morning and it's not easy, but it's almost easy in the sense of like mentally. And so not only am I training my legs, my aerobic engine, but it's like up here as well. You're probably noticing I, I like to train up here as well, not just the, the physical side of the muscles, the tendons, the ligaments. Granted, you gotta pay attention to that, make sure you don't overdo it. Um, but at the end of the day, that is why I am doing in, in the training plan a lot of, a lot of um, and especially for the marathon, it would, be, it would be much different. Remember I said, after the Toledo half marathon, I'm not sure if you remember this, okay? After the Toledo half marathon, I said I did too much uh, volume and not enough speed. And I still concur with that. But a half marathon, concur, but a half marathon versus a marathon, pretty different as far as what you need to get through that two hour window. In my case, uh, when you start burning, when you've burned through all of your glycogen and you're on the brink, you know what I mean? Mile 20, 21, 22, 23, when it really starts to hurt. So um, still base building. Um, still base building and sooner rather than later because this training block is so short for me we will start to add the speed endurance which we talked about two or three days ago okay here we go let's just write out a few things here a.m. and there's about 30 cars in the gym parking lot I mean it just makes me so happy people getting the workout in before they go off to work
Boxes. It, these boxes are running gear. Actually, let me move the camera here. And it's amazing, you know, you have gear. Some, you know, this has been packed away for, oh man, two months. So obviously some of the items in here I don't absolutely need. And this is the moment to go. But I do need like these, for this for example, these compressed sport half tights. Uh, I absolutely, use, I use these a lot in May and June before we packed them away. So anyway, um, oh man, a Nike travel suitcase gopro game socks love these socks shout out to smart wolf my walmart fleece that all of you loved okay Ooh, yes shout out to slovenia under armor that's what that's for like going to the gym when it's really cold out really really cold out maybe like a three to five mile jog and you're just not building up much sweat old school throwback reebok oh my my yes indeed run with hope Brave like Gabe. BV, shout out to Buena Vista Cross Country. This was my uh, junior year, and I was third on the team, everyone. So just keep dreaming out there. Can you see that there? My times from my junior year. That was my 5K PR. From, I thought that was pretty cool. My cross country coach in high school would put our PR for the year on the back of our t-shirts. Boom, you better believe I was there. Oh yeah, I keep all my old t-shirts. Come on now, Olympic trials, Eugene, Oregon. I think this was two, yeah, 2008. Kendall Mountain Run, shout out to all the Colorado Mountain Runners. DGR Race Crew, our first virtual race. This is the all print all over. I think you can still get this from the merch shop. Okay, I gotta tell a quick story. This is actually really, I don't know, should I say providential? What's on this t-shirt here? I don't think I've ever shared this before. So in the late 90s, early 2000s, my dad would race the Pikes Peak Marathon, Pikes Peak Ascent in Manitou Springs. And at the bottom of the mountain before and after the race, you know, a lot of vendors would show up and sell their goods, okay? One of the vendors was a t-shirt company, okay? And I saw this t-shirt and this is, this is amazing. I bought this t-shirt in the late 90s, probably like, I'm guessing like 97, 98, 99, sometime around there. I just wanted the t-shirt, I wanted it. But once you see what's on the t-shirt, you might, it, it, it's like full circle to what I'm doing right now in my running and on YouTube. It, it's blo it, it blows my mind, okay, you ready for this? It's nothing crazy, but like, look at this, look at this. Boom, can you see that there? It's a pile of running shoes and it says miles and miles. I hope you can read that, okay? So I'm running a lot right now, miles and miles, and I do running shoe reviews. And you might ask, Seth, prove to us right now that this shirt was not purchased last week. All right, you ready for this? On the back of the shirt, holes cheddar cheese baby look at that shirt that is miles and miles of running oh come on now and it's a medium oh my goodness that's all they probably had at the time so miles and miles oh that's a great that is a keeper that's a keeper that might be worth framing right there okay i'm gonna move this all down uh downstairs let's go enough storytelling come on <laughs> good job henry yeah uh-huh, good job. Okay. Okay, box is not emptied. I will empty that box before the day is over. Every day, True Love and I, we look at each other, we just say, okay, one box a day, and we got this. We will get this house unpacked, just like the studio. We will get this house unpacked at some point, it's like running. It's like, that's just like every day, turning a doorknob. Okay, here's the deal. A lot of thoughts going through my head about recovery gear, recovery footwear, and actually, I'm gonna do it now. Question of the day, not what is your number one piece of recovery gear, rather, I've never asked this before. What, and this is very, very specific. What is your number one item, uh, recovery footwear? Okay, that's a better way to put it. What do you wear on your feet 
when you're recovering after a run, a long run, a workout. And listen, you might walk barefoot, but I got to tell, I got to tell you, this is interesting and connected to that. When I keep talking about that old man strength, I remember distinctly two years ago talking with my brother about how it was challenging to walk around my old house. Well, we had hardwood floors more so, but I, I feel like my body has gone through that adaptation process where running at that point probably 100 miles a week where my feet were just barking at me all the time. And so, yes, where are they? I invested in, actually, I made a vlog. So these are the Hoka Slides. I don't know the, actually the official name. Hoka Slides, we'll call them. But I, two and a half years ago, I think it was two, two and a half years ago, I tried Ufus, okay? O-O-F-O-S, who's a fan? Let me know in the comments. Uh, but I don't have any of those sandals anymore, those recovery sandals anymore, because... Uh, that is when my plantar fasciitis struck. And I'm just a little hesitant. It's almost too soft, too much cushion for my liking, the Ufus. And, but oh, they're so comfortable. They're amazing. Therefore, I pivoted to these Hoka slides. Actually, also, they were given out, they were given out for free at the uh, Speedgo 50K out in Utah. And that's when I discovered them. And I just was like, okay, they're soft and comfortable, but they also provide a little bit more support than Ufus, okay? Now, real quick, got to pull up. Uh, let me find his name. As many of you are probably aware, it's Jean-Luc Diard. I'm not saying it right, but he used to work. He was the CEO of Solomon. His story is incredible. And then he left Solomon as the CEO, and he started Hoka. Many of you know that story. And he's from France. Now, he, you know, Hoka's based in California now. And I don't know what year it was, but eventually he not sold. Okay, I'm not going to be careful what I say, but eventually Hoka went under the umbrella of Deckers. Okay, Deckers is a huge, huge company that has many brands under, underneath it. So Hoka is underneath the Deckers family of brands, just so you're aware. And about three months ago, everybody, so no, I maybe it was at May or June 2021, I was sent uh, some more sandals that were just odd looking. I'll just put it that way. And so here we go. And not to, okay, they're just odd looking. And I was like, I, had, I don't know about this. These look kind of strange. So there they are. They are made by Decker's X lab. Okay, so look at the first, you know, there's fur on them. This uh, flip flop has like camouflage looking print. But remember what I'm always saying beholden to no one and don't, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. I was like, okay, I will try these out. Um, and so sure enough, I have been wearing these all summer. So these, this is the flip flop. Actually, let me get you the official name right now. One second, one second. So this is the cozy. It's GLDTR. I'm looking on the Running Warehouse website. I don't know if they're going for Gladiator or like shortened for glad Gladiator. And then this is the Hoka Cozy uh, Mule. Okay, this one over here. And this one is a little more closed. And I'm not going to do like a full review or full score or durometer test on these, but I got to tell you, these are now officially. And listen, I, it takes me a little while mentally to get over the fact that like I'm wearing something that has fur on it or that has leopard print on it or whatever you want to call it, or the fact that it's like a made by Deckers. But again, you got to block that out when you're testing gear. And so sure enough, these are going to be like, it's amazing. More support, more cushion. Um, sorry, not more cushion, but more support in a, it's not too soft like the UFO sandals that I was wearing two years ago. So there you have it. Deckers X Lab. Thank you for sending these. I didn't buy, oh yeah, okay, they're not giving them away. They are available down below in the description from Running Warehouse. It's basically like buying a running shoe. And okay, I'll just tell you, all right? You want the durability prediction? I've been wearing these all summer. I mean, the outsole on this guy on the flip-flop looks a little bit more on the heel here. Um, but I'm going to say, like, I will probably have these for at least 18 to 24 months is my prediction. That is my, and again, it's like babying the feet a little bit. My feet are looking a little gnarly right now after all the vertical, like they, I'm losing toenails. I've got blisters. They're just looking gnarly. You saw me put a, um, a uh, Band-Aid on my foot this morning, 
And all right, I'll just tell you the price point. Hundred and I think about hundred and twenty dollars for both. Uh, let me just well, let me just look. All right, we're we're doing this. Okay, so one hundred and thirty for the cozy mule, and then the flip flop version I think is one hundred and twenty. Okay, so I mean that's a lot of money. That's a but I gotta tell you these are gonna last a long, long time, and they look a little unique to my liking. But at the end of the day, I care more. In fact, here I am walking through Walmart yesterday. Uh, I care more about functionality of what I'm wearing, what I'm running in over looks. As you can tell, walking through Walmart, I really don't care what I what I look like even out in public. So there you go, everybody. Uh, comment of the day. We're pivoting a little bit, but I just wanted to get that out there for this is my number one piece of recovery footwear now, my favorite recovery footwear that I own. And I was, I'm shocked I'm even saying it because three months ago I was like, oh my goodness, I'm not going to wear this out in public. But sure enough, they are treating me very, very well. Okay, so we're pivoting here, a little more serious, uh, but it's just such an inspiring comment. James Baker, thank you for answering the question of the day yesterday. Uh, he says, currently preparing for my first ever marathon, London in two weeks. James, so excited for you. He's running for cancer research in memory of his mom who passed away last year. James, I'm so sorry. That's like fresh and not that long ago. So I'm sorry, James, uh, who passed away last year. She was the reason I took up running last September. I've had both calf and Achilles injuries over the past six weeks. So haven't done nearly the volume that I would have liked, but I'm determined to get it done. James, let's go. I mean, keep us posted on the next two weeks, how you uh, progress through this these injuries. We are behind you. I wish I could, frankly, fly across the world and go film like your journey through the London Marathon. Thank you, James, for sharing. That's just inspiring. That's what DGR is all about. Okay, I know I'm going on really, really long at this point, but unbelievable. Decker's X Lab, like throwing down. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just, let's just, you know, le uh, what is it? Is this leopard print or is this uh, camouflage? I don't really know. All right, everyone, we will toss it to, you know, we're going old school. Uh, Hoka Slide versus uh, Ufus. I made a vlog, it's like a, a recovery footwear battle. Oh man, this is like three, it might be three years ago. Right here, right here, right here. All right, everyone, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.